are in office hours on November 17th and we have a question about how to approach the oh it's not this problem uh, how to approach the problem of uh, what is this problem four on the fall 2015 actual midterm um, it is a yes so the question says consider the following code in C syntax and we can see there's a program here with three functions which looks delightful and then at the bottom it says draw the stack draw the program stack at the first execution of location one specified as a comment in the function main so that tells us we now know we have to we want to see what happens what does the stack look like when we hit location one right cool well we should read everything right we shouldn't just start executing things we need to read it so we say uh, label on the stack all function frames and inside each function uh, frame, that should say frame, and inside each function frame label the parameters to the function, the value of those parameters, the function's local variables, and the value of those local variables. Uh, also the important thing is that's why it's in italics, you do not need to follow precise CDECL calling convention. So what this means is that you don't have to, we know based on CDECL that uh, when we call function bar on the stack, we will have CBA like this. Uh, we're saying we're relaxing that restriction and saying we don't have to have it exactly like that. As long as we have all of the parameters, that is the important part. Okay. And then the next important thing is we've learned all kinds of crazy scoping rules and pass by semantics. So this one says we assume static scoping and we're assuming pass by value semantics. You said that in class that we always assume static scoping at this point in time. So if you don't say that, it's just going to In class. class. Right. In class, for all the class examples, we're going to assume for the runtime environment questions. Okay, so how to approach this? Well, we've got to draw a stack. And so as we've said, the only proper, well, okay. The only proper way to draw a stack is starting at the top and going down. So our stack is going to start here, right? So first question, so we see we have global variables x and we have this definition of a function main. So is x going to be on our stack? Yes. Why? Do they? Neither. Oh, no. wow. They are globally <laughs> allocated. The oh. compiler just chooses a location for x and puts x somewhere else, right? So this is why we have the three types of variable allocations, right? We have global variable allocation, which is p stored in a fixed location and is always there. So it is allocated when the program's created. It is never deallocated. And those locations never move. If you print out the location of x, the address of x throughout the program, it will remain constant. It may not remain constant through each run, but that's something else. OK, global variable is going to be global, so it's not going to be on the stack. Stack allocation is done automatically when a new function is executed and when we get into a new scope, so a new function frame. And stacks, stack allocation is automatically deallocated. So when we leave a scope, we automatically deallocate that. That's what the pointer returns back to. Exactly. Contrast that with um, the heap, which the programmer has to manually say, give me memory, allocate me memory on the heap. And that is good until the programmer says, I'm done using this memory, feel free to reuse it. I'm freeing this memory. Cool. So, we don't draw X on our stack. Our stack will, s oh man, sorry, my position, I need to make it like this, otherwise my, sorry, for people who are watching at home, I just moved the mouse so I could actually draw a straight line, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay, so, we have our stack. So, when our program first gets called, what function is on the stack? Bar. No, we call bar first, right? Wait, okay, main calls. What'd you say? I was looking for what function was called. Main. So, main. <laughs> so, what's the first <laughs> function that executes? So, main. Main. Main, right? Main. This is where we start executing. This is a function, just like every other function, main has a function frame. So main is going to have some function frame. And so we will have, and what do we have to draw? We have to draw draw the 
program frame, label on the stack, all, label all the function frames with the name of the function. Inside each function frame, label the parameters to the function and the values of those parameters. So, what parameters are there domain? As I. Parameters. Oh, I. I. That's good. Okay. And what's the value for I? We don't know. Oh, Main okay. just got called. Right, right. There's gonna be some value in there, right? We don't know what it is right now. And then, how many local variables are there for main? It looks like two. Let me see. Uh, one for baz. The array is two. Cool. So we have one function baz, or sorry, one local variable baz. What's the value of baz? We don't know. Yet. We, don't know yet. we don't know yet. Exactly. And then we have c. What's the value of c? Right, so we can draw it like this. You can either draw, it doesn't really matter how you draw the array, but we know there's some array of 0, 1, and 2 here. Right? Cool. And this is the function frame of main. Wait, ah, dang, it's ugly. Cool. Now we go. We say if x is equal to 100, ooh, what's the value of x? 10. So we have is x equal sorry, is x equal to 10? Yes. So then we do go into here and we output what? i is 20. X. i is 20. So i is here. So we can say there's some global x. We can keep the value of x up here. We can say it was 10. Now it's being changed to 0. And i is now 20. So now we have a value for i. It's 20. And then we print something out. Do we care about what we print out? No, unless you ask the question. Exactly. The question does not say what is it output, so we don't care about that. I believe I actually put this in here as debugging code and forgot to remove it for the midterm <laughs> question. But that's because I like to have these actually execute. So, OK, so then we get to this branch, right? This is not an if else. This is an if. We say if i is greater than 0. So is i greater than 0? Yes. Yes. Then do what? Now we call function bar. We call function bar. When we call function bar, what's going to happen? We create another function frame. We create another function frame below main, right? Our stacks right. grow down. Okay. So the stack pointer pushes down now. Yes. So right now, so the nice thing about this question, and this is why, you know, we're not asking C decal semantics. We're not saying it has to look a certain way. We're not saying give me the stack pointer and show me how that's all changing, right? This is at a high level. How, what does the stack look like? So we're going to call bar. So now we have bar. So what parameters are there for bar? A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Go like this. A, B, C. Ah. Right? Cool. So now what are the values here? I mean, the local variable. What are the values oh, for A, B, and C? It's a char, char, and an ant. Those are types. What are the oh. values? It's like C2. C2, which is? 2. 2. C0. Which is? 0. And then I, which is 20. Cool. All right. Does bar have any local variables? Uh, yes. X and Y. So we have X. Oh, we got to make a new one for Y. Do, do they have values? Uh, no. Not yet. Do we have to put them in that order? Does it no, that's why we say the okay. precise C-decal semantics doesn't matter. Um, you good. should, I can't remember how we graded it, but we should have all the parameters before all the local variables, right? That definitely makes sense. So this is the function frame for bar. Right. Cool. Then we look at the first line, what are we doing? Twenty-one. Are we sure it's not changing this one? Yes. Uh, is it going to change this one? Uh, no, it's changing a local one because it's inside yeah. of there. Cool. Well, see, look at that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> gotta throw. You gotta keep you guessing. Okay. So next, what happens on the next line? We call a function name. Okay. No. Well, we 
call it foo. Yeah. And then what are we going to do with foo once foo executes? We create another function for it for foo. Well, when, sorry, so when it finishes, when foo finishes, then what's going to happen? Then you call main. Yes, then the return of foo is getting passed to the function main. Well, it makes sense, but I, I didn't see that until you said it. Well, we have a function call in here, right? The things we have to evaluate, we want to call main, but first we have to call foo so we get the return value of foo that we're going to pass into main. So we're going to call foo, so now what do we, how does our stack change? We make another, uh, we make another uh, frame, yep. function frame. We make another function frame on the bottom of our stack for, uh, foo. for foo. So how many local variables does it have? Uh, it has two parameters. Two alpha and beta. Not local variables, those are parameters, right? These are parameters, sorry. Yeah, alpha, beta, and how many local parameters? And then local variables, sorry. One. One. A. a. Yes. Cool. So then what is the value for the parameter alpha? What do we pass in? We pass in C and B. C, which is? C is. 20, and B is zero. zero. Cool. So now we're in foo, and then we say A is equal to 10. So what did that change? Uh, okay, the quick question. What? That doesn't call a compiler error. I can't remember. Why? Pass a char in for end. Uh, char beta B. Oh, no, and alpha takes a char. C is a int. char. Int. Oh, no, you're right. C here's an int. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's tricky. Well, you're mixing it up. <laughs> yeah. But yeah char, know. char, int. Yes. Int, char. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Roll with the punches. Okay. So what happens here? So A is what? What? How does this line change things? Uh, it's a local A is 10. Local A is 10. Boom. And then what about this one? That is now global X. The global X changes to what? Uh, Negative 20. Negative 20. Actually. Now what happens on the next line? Now we return negative 20 to main. That's, um... We what? No, no, no. Yeah. You return... You oh. send in negative 20 to main, and then you return that value. So then what happens on our stack? Uh, you call the main function? Well, yeah, you call the main function, but you pass in negative 20. Mm -hmm. But now I'm yeah, confused now. <laughs> because so this is? Foo. That's foo. Foo. Cool, now what happens? I get. I don't know. Do we does the, the stack pointer jump up to main now? You can have two new mains, right? Mm -hmm. like main is main. a function just like anything else, yeah. right? Like when we have recursive functions, if we had bar oh, calling yeah, bar, we true. will just have you new function frames of bar. So now you build right? another frame for main. Oh, now we build gosh. another frame for main. I forgot about that. Do you need like, this empty? No, that's okay. just me. I drew too many, and I don't want to change it. <laughs> So now we know from our other one, it should be in the same order, right? I, Baz, and C. Right. Now the question is, what is, so what's the value for I? So I is the parameter to That's this negative, invocation of main. That's negative 20. Negative 20, cool. And now we know this thing is main. Right? right except it's 20, not 2. Sorry, negative 20, you're right, yes. Cool, okay, so then we have B, Baz is nothing, C is this is 0, 1, 2, cool, then we check, is X equal to 10? No. No, X is negative 20. It's X greater than okay, zero. so it skips there. Is, is I later, greater than 0? No. No. And then where are we? Location. So there we go. Oh. That's our answer. So where is the... That would take a little while. Actually, that was not quick. That's time for a midterm question. They had an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, that took some time. We like, only had two midterms. In 50 minutes. That would but I was going to ask you, and maybe this is because I haven't seen it in a while, what, what, what cases are we using the like pointers, like the EAX and I mean, EBP and stuff like when we're, is that the C depot stuff? That would be more, that's more like how it's implemented, right? This is more like a question asking you at a high level, what does the stack look like? Okay. Like we, we'll those are all x86 registers. We'll have questions with the pointers and stuff. Because that's, I understand that, even though I haven't seen that in a while. That actually makes sense, but it was more, I, I'm more confused about pointers. Do we have any, do we ever have those? 
with pointers. I mean, with the, the with the with the um, x86 though, because it's basically going through. I would probably not ask you any specific x86 level okay. instructions. That's, that's perfect. Right? I mean, you have a practice <laughs> midterm, you have old midterms, you can kind of see how okay, I mean, okay. all that stuff goes. Good question. Yeah. Um, so when yes. we did return main, okay. yes, that's when we created the new. Um, yes, this, this main. Mm -hmm. So what about the the main? Um, Here. Uh, yes. This is only going to get called when this foo returns. Yeah. So this main will return something eventually. And then when it returns something, that's going to get returned from foo. And that will get passed into a new invocation of main with yeah. that value. So would there be another, another main or no? Nope, because we have not invoked. We c bar will only call main after it's called foo. Right, because it needs to first call foo to get its return value, yeah. and then after foo, so we know that's completely returned, then it would do a new main. Okay. So and this question is also good because it tests your semantic understanding of code and being able to read code and understand what it should be doing. Yeah. Right, so it's testing kind of two things. Any other questions on this before I kill the recording? Uh, that was, that's perfect. Cool.